So the big question is this, how do investors like us who don't have a PhD in finance or millions to start investing, how do we grow our bank accounts to build real savings and retirements and yet still have the time to do what we really love? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answer. Awesome. So we're going to start this book. I'm going to start this um, introduction series um, and like really how to connect with people on a very like fundamental note and pretty, pretty high point of contention, which is like awesome. Um, so I'm really, really excited to get right into the story because I remember when I first read this book years and years and years and years ago, um, this story is really what like hooked me into the whole thing. It was like so, so good. I mean, just ridiculously well written. Um, and I want to get right into it. So let's go over to the computer and let's figure out, you know, if, if you want to gather the honey, if you want this honey, what do you need to do? Well, probably don't kick over the beehive, right? Um, and it, you know, it's pretty basic. Don't kick over the beehive. Sure. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh huh? Um, and yet so many people, they just don't kind of don't understand this concept. Um, and so like, it's just so, so, so critical. And we're going to get right into it, um, right now. So 1931, there was this guy, it was like the biggest man hot ever is two gun Crowley. And he's like this cop killer, right in his apartment. And after weeks of like the cop searching for him and trying to find this guy, they finally nail him down. And he's like sitting in his apartment. And it's his girlfriend's arm and he's hiding behind this couch, right? Um, and behind this couch, he's writing this, this like note because he's basically like about to get killed, right? These guys like shooting through the window, shooting through his home um, and just firing a barrage of bullets at him. And he's just sort of like hiding behind this, this couch, um, which doesn't really stop bullets very well. And so pistols, you know, everything, um, pew, 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 they're shooting it right through him and everybody's watching. Why is this happening, right? Like, why is everybody so upset at this guy? And why is he like, basically getting killed. Um, well, you see, you know, a couple of uh, weeks ago, he was with his girlfriend and they were like sitting in their car. And as they were in this car, uh, this guy came and, and pulled up and they were like making out and he, he's like, is this cop, right? And so he stands up and he's like, hey, um, you know, license and registration, pretty basic stuff uh, like that. You know, what's, what's going on? Why, let me see your license. And so as he's sitting on the side of this country road, he pulls out a gun and he just like shoots this guy and like leaves him for dead on the side of the road. And he's just like killed like instantly. Um, just like the, the drop of a hat, he just like murdered this guy, which was like ridiculous, right? Insane. And yet as he's sitting here and he's sitting behind this couch, he's writing this, this letter, like, and you can, like, he's got blood like spewing out of his body cause he's like dying. Um, and in this letter, he says that he is a pure soul who would never hurt anybody. And under his coat is a weary heart, but a kind one that would do nobody any harm. Now, this is the guy who literally just like showered this guy down with like a barrage of lead, like with the, like with no thought whatsoever. And yet he's writing this note about how he's like the best guy ever and how he would never hurt anybody. Um, and after like they, they captured him and they brought him to the hospital and helped him out and stuff, he survived and they sentenced him to the electric chair. And when he got to the death house, what he says is freak, absolutely freaking berserk. He says, this is what I get for defending myself. This is what I get for defending myself. Not this is what I get for killing people. This is what I get for defending myself. Um, and he just is like totally blind to who he is and to what he's doing and what he has done and like his entire life journey, right? He just totally ignores like all the stuff that he has done is awful and instead blames other people and says, are you serious? This is what I get. And it's ridiculous. Why, right? Well, it's because he didn't blame himself for anything. And it's such a huge, huge, huge problem. You have so many people on anything and they like, you know, they sleep past their alarm or they never make it to work on time or they skip that, that shower that they really, really should have taken or they don't make it to the gym like five times out of the week or they just can't consistently stick with whatever it is that they need to do to have the impact and have the success that they want in their life. And they don't blame themselves for anything. They don't take what, what does blaming yourself mean? Blaming yourself means taking responsibility like holy crap guys it's not that difficult response ability ability like this is so huge you gotta be responsible for yourself you're like 
like this is the epith like this is the worst case scenario this idea that this guy is like murdering people and he won't take responsibility for it like you can't say you didn't just like shower that guy down with bullets because he like killed him and yet this is an extreme example right this is like you know super super intense super hardcore and, and yet this is the mentality that you want to apply to your life right because if you miss that meeting or you you don't do the thing that you promised yourself that you do that you scheduled into your day that you said this needs to happen if you just ignore it and you don't stick with your guns what happens you get to this point where instead of focusing on success instead of focusing on growing instead of focusing on like actually doing things and like crushing it you fade away and you fade away and you fade away and you have failure after failure after failure because you never hold yourself responsible and you just think that oh it's not a big deal i don't have to worry about it um and that's the mentality that so many people have when it comes to their lives and when it comes to the work that they do and you've got to overcome that crap it's bad it will crush you it will destroy you so you need to take responsibility um and in this idea is it's prevalent in so 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 many people that just do awful things they don't hold themselves responsible and they don't like they, they aren't able to take take a step back right like if this is their body they can't take a step back and look at themselves objectively and say hmm you know is there something wrong here is there something i need to work on here is there something i need to improve here um really great example al capone one of like the biggest crime bosses ever um and one of the most america's most notorious public enemy the gang leader who shot up like all of Cincinnati and like the most sinister guy ever who was killing like literally tons and tons and tons of people. I mean like machine guns, murder was like rampant all over the place. These guys like literally dead, like murder. And it's so difficult, right, to, to talk about these, these, these anomalies and these people because like, you know, if you have the same background as Al Capone and you were born in the same town as Al Capone, you had the same parents as Al Capone and you went through all the same life experiences that Al Capone went through like you would be al capone right like if you have the exact same background and the exact same history and the exact same thoughts and the exact same experiences as somebody else like basically you'll be that person right um and it doesn't matter like you know if you're born or you know, your traits like if you have the exact same life path as somebody else like you're gonna be that person right because you know your past like it's not the same as your present right and your past is not today and that's totally totally true yeah your past like it shapes who you are today, right? And so like going through this course, going through this content, like within a month, within a year after you go through this, like this is gonna be in your past and you're not gonna be like the exact same person that you are. You're gonna be a new person. You're gonna be your present person, right? Um, but this content and this education and what you go through in the past is going to like fundamentally shift who you are in the present and make you a better person, right? Um, and so it's the same with Al Capone. He had this very, you know, past and his past turned him into what this huge crime boss right and this guy who was just like killing tons and tons of people um and so like if you have the same past as somebody you're gonna be like them in the present so you have to understand their perspective you have to understand where they're coming from with that said like a bad past is not an excuse for like killing tons of people um and so al capone had this same problem where he didn't really like blame himself and as he referenced himself he didn't condemn himself at all he saw himself as a public benefactor, like murdering people as a benefactor. And he said he was an unappreciated and misunderstood public benefactor. Now, does that sound like Al Capone? Does this guy who's like destroying and distributing drugs and killing people, is he an unappreciated and misunderstood benefactor? Like, I don't think so, man. But that's how he perceived himself. Why? Because he couldn't really dissociate his ego and his view of himself and his uh, personality from the way that other people he couldn't like look at himself objectively from the way that other people would look at him and so it's this huge 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 problem that he had and it, it, oh my god and so like like if you can't look at yourself objectively right and you can't understand where you're coming from you can't understand your problems and you know there's not really that good to like kill tons of people what's that mean well it means you can never improve right um if you're you know reviewing maybe you're like on a football team right um maybe you're playing a sport and you take like a video i remember um I was working on like my my hurdle uh, 
for him for the 300s. And like my coach, he would take his phone out, right? And he would take his camera and put it in slow motion, record me doing these hurdles. And then I'd stand there and look at the phone and go over my posture and my and like positioning and what I was doing. And you review and you review and you review yourself and you objectively look at yourself from that third person point of view. And you know, after we did that for a couple of weeks, what happened? Well, because we were going down this track and, and you know, there was this big hurdle that we had to overcome. Um, it became so, so, so much easier to like get the form down and, and really do it really, really well when you had this like objective third person guy um, point of view holding this phone and recording it. And then you can go and you can like review it, right? You can look back at this and you can understand exactly what you need to do to improve, right? And so if you have this problem and you can look at it from that third person point of view, you are responsible for everything in your life. Every single output, action, result that you have comes from the work that you do. And so if you can objectively look at what you're doing and understand what you need to change and what you need to work on to improve yourself, you can do it. Um, and But that's the problem with these guys. They just weren't able to do it. It was terrible, right? Um, and like same thing with another gangster named uh, Dutch Schultz. Like before he was killed in a barrage of gang bullets. Um, and like he was one of the most notorious rats in all of New York. A newspaper interview he, he had right before he died. Like he said that he was a public benefactor and that he was doing good for the city and he was a good guy and he freaking believed it because what you tell yourself you will believe you can convince yourself of anything and so you want to convince yourself what of bogus and of lies that say you're succeeding when in reality you're completely failing and you're literally killing people um and not like physically killing people but like you're metaphorically like destroying your hopes and your prospects and your dreams and it just crushes your, your development and your growth. Like if that's the process you're going through and that's the world that you're in, if you can sort of like get over that and believe in the positivity, believe in the growth and understand exactly what you need to do to have the impact and the success that you want, like everything changes. Um, and it's so, so, so powerful. Um, this idea that you need to believe the truth. So make this anything the truth um, and stick it to yourself short and be real with the world that you're encountering and what you're going through. Because the moment that you have total and complete clarity of mind and clarity of being, and you understand exactly where you are, if you know where you are, and you're truthful about where you are right now, and you know where you wanna be in the future, it's so much easier to get here if you understand where you're starting from, because you know that, okay, well, I need to take these steps on the pathway to get there. And then you can take those steps and take the next step, take the next step, take the next step, right? And you can have the growth, you can have the impact, you can have the, the significance that you want, right? And it all sends your ability to like go up this staircase and ascend, um, which is so, 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 so powerful. And that all comes from your ability to really understand where you're coming from and be completely truthful, honest, and transparent with who you are and your, your, your state of being, right? Because the instant that it ha happens, the instant that you know like exactly what you need to do to have the success and, and the impact and, and know like these are my traits versus this is where I wanna be, like everything changes because you have total and complete clarity and understanding of who you are and where your next step needs to be to have the impact and the success you desire, which is so, so powerful. Um, it's this concept that like, I feel like I was totally lost without it. And then the instant that I realized, like everything changed because I stopped like focusing on excuses and you stop like thinking about, you know, reasons that you fail. And instead you focus on like only the next steps and only the next actions, only the next victories that you need. Um, and then you start to accrue and accrue and accrue and accrue more and more and more victories. And it's this idea that like, if, if you've got like this trophy case in your house and this trophy case has like nothing in it, you're gonna feel like crap. Um, and what you can't do is you can't turn a blind eye to that. You can't just ignore that. What do you need to do? You need to train. You need to go hard, um, and it's not like just sports, like it's all aspects of, you know, whatever you're doing, like if you have a barren bank account or, or whatever, right? You need to train, you need to go hard, you need to figure out how to start to accumulate like small victories. So maybe you get like a medal, right? Or, and then you get another medal and you start to grow and, and compound and have faith in yourself and belief in yourself. Then you get a better medal um, and then you get a better victory, right? Then you start to get what? Like blue ribbons, right? And so it grows and it grows and it grows and you have to have more and more growth. And now that this cabinet is full of successes, like do you think it was easier for Michael Phelps to win his like 
10th gold medal or his first gold medal. Like, it's ridiculously difficult to get this first gold medal. But once you have that initial success in whatever career, or whatever field, or whatever it is you love to do, like, all the rest is so, so, so much easier because you've done the work, you've put in the, the effort and the baseline, and you understand, like, exactly what the goal is and exactly where you need to go into the next step, into the next level of your success, that's the level of your impact. Like, all of it comes from the work that you do to have the growth right now, which is like so huge um, and, and just freaking massive, right? And so you wanna make sure that you're absolutely crushing it as you get to this first success because you're able to objectively look at it and say, look, this is an empty trophy case. I need to get my butt going. I need to train and train and train. And I cannot rationalize my failure. You know, so many people, they are never able to get this first ribbon. And because of that, they never have any of the success because they rationalize their failure. And they say, oh, you know, I'm, um, I have this background, I have this identity, I have this character trait. And because of that, because of this thing that like I basically can't control, oh, I must just be destined for failure. Like that's ridiculous. Some of the most successful people on the planet um, and like, you know, leaders of the world, the most wealthy individuals like Carnegie, um, Rockefeller, like these guys started as complete broke people right and, and like um carnegie he was literally like working 18 hour shifts or 12 hour shifts um at the factory and then he would go to the library and read and read and read and read to try to improve himself and instead of rationalizing why he was going to be a loser instead of saying oh i must be destined for failure because i'm coming from total poor poverty he got rid of these excuses and he said what can i do now to have the success and the impact and the growth that i desire and he went and he went and he went hard into his education and into his growth and into his development because he was not about to say he was going to be a failure. He was not going to explain to himself why it was going to be a failure. He wasn't going to make up excuses to himself about why it was going to be a failure because he knew that in his heart and his soul, he had to succeed. He had no choice but to succeed and he was going to grow and grow and grow until he became one of the literally like wealthiest people like in history, right? And so that's the power, right? It's this idea that you know, these these uh, mobsters and these gangsters and Al Capone, uh, this, this guy who like shot the cop and, and, did, and Dutch Schultz, like they were desperate people who didn't blame themselves for anything. And because they didn't blame themselves for anything, they were like total and, and complete. I mean, like we know their names because they're such bad people and they were awful, right? Um, and it is just insane this this uh idea that like if you don't hold yourself accountable to the work that you're doing um and i have like these cousins i know these friends and and like all of them you know like they're stuck maybe in like a in a place they don't like in life they're stuck in like you know this this job that they really they just aren't a fan of um and instead of like you know coming in and saying well how can i improve how can i grow you know how can i learn to trade stocks stuff like that i don't know it's really fun i like stocks they change their lives of so many people I know, um, man, it's so, so, so cool. Instead of like going through it with that perspective and thinking about the improvement they can make, they rationalize the failure. And it's like, oh, the government's fault. Oh, the president's fault. Oh, it's, it's not my problem. And it's like, if you don't blame yourself, you're never gonna change because you can't change other people. At least in the long term, you cannot force other people to change. And so if you blame other people, like you're not going to succeed because you can't change other people. The only person you have total and complete control over is yourself. Um, and I remember for a long time, I didn't really understand this concept. And I had a really difficult time because I was blaming other people and I was saying it was their fault that I couldn't do things. It was their fault I wasn't having success. It was their fault that I was so upset and sad and isolated and alone. And so I blamed them and I was upset and it was devastating and it, nothing ever changed. Nothing changed because I was rationalizing failure with bogus excuses. So you need to take the responsibility away from maybe your, your family or your peers or your friends or the people that you know, like cut them off, right? And understand that the only person responsible for your success, the only person responsible for your growth is you. And as soon as, as, soon as you get that, like everything changes. It's, it's so, so, so ridiculously difficult. And it all stems from your ability to have this massive, massive, massive amount of personal responsibility. Um, and understand that like nobody freaking cares as much about you than yourself. And if you're your biggest fan, you're the person who cares the most, then who do you think is the person that's best suited to grow and the best suited to, to, to have like, 
you know, your, your growth. It's this idea that I talk about and then we'll move on um, with like money managers and asset management that like, you know, vast majority of people, they have like these investment managers, but they don't really understand you because like, who do you think is going to manage your portfolio the best? Like if you have the education, you know what to do. Like it's you, right? Because you can understand yourself better than anybody else. Um, and as soon as you stop rationalizing and saying it's other people's faults that you're failing and you focus on improving yourself, all of a sudden what happens? It's so, so, so huge. Uh, if we could zoom in a little. Um, instead of like this desperation, this, these issues and these failures, you focus on growing yourself. And as soon as you do that, all of a sudden, what, what happens? It's so, so, so powerful. This success starts to accrue and it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows because you're focusing on yourself. You're focusing what matters and you understand like the exact basis for your success all stem from your ability to grow and grow and grow and succeed. And it, it, it's just so, so powerful. Um, and, it, and it changes like absolutely everything, which is just amazing. It's, it's insane. And so as you're going through this process, you're going through this journey, you want to make sure that like to absolutely freaking crush it, you work on yourself and like blame yourself for everything that goes wrong. Because if you blame yourself, you're going to take responsibility. If you take responsibility, you're going to take the action steps that you need to overcome that objection, right? Um, and you're gonna start to go up this staircase instead of saying, oh, it's somebody else's fault. Oh, I can't believe, you know, that this person, maybe like the teacher wasn't good enough or something like that. Um, like it's not their fault, right? Like if, if you're going through this class and you're struggling or, or you're going through like a life thing and you're struggling, like find somebody, take responsibility, say it's my fault, I need to improve myself. I need to raise my hand and say, I need help. Because the instant that you do that, everything changes, everything shifts. And it is so radically different that like, none of you know, the goals that you do, the actions that you have can ever have the same impact as your success on an internal level. And it all stems from your ability to take responsibility um, and be you. Um, there's this really cool guy, John Wanamaker. And he says that it is foolish to scold and that he has overcome like a lifetime of limitations without fretting over the fact that God does not see fit to distribute evenly the gift of intelligence he understands that like he is not going to be equal to other people and that it's his responsibility to go out there and freaking grow and to succeed right and on all of this prosperity all of this development is up to him it's your responsibility and nobody else's in the instant that you can understand that in the instant that like you guys that you've got to grow and that it's up to you to succeed like everything changes and it, it's so 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 powerful because like he, he learned this soon and when you learn this like what do you think happens well when you learn this you start to understand that if you want to grow if you want to develop and if you want to have the success you've got to take the action step you got to go through courses and education and content like this to, like fundamentally improve who you are and to move up to that next level of success and grow and grow and grow and grow yourself because when you grow yourself what are you doing you're growing the only person that matters you're the only person that takes responsibility. Um, and like, as soon as that happens, you have to have this massive level of impact, this massive level of growth. And it all stems from your ability to focus and say, look, this is the goal. This is the passion and this is the path. Let's go out there and have this huge, 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 huge amount of success and impact all because you can focus on being completely and totally responsible for yourself and your success. And you understand that like literally nobody else Will make you succeed except for the most important person on the planet which is you and so that's the power and, and that's the growth and that's really the core concept behind like all of this right is that like you control everything and anything that you want is within reach it all comes down to like your ability to pursue it your ability to grow and grow and grow to succeed um and as soon as you can do that like everything changes um, and you move on to that next level of impact, you move on to that next level of goal, that next level of significance, everything comes and everything stems from your ability to take responsibility and be the only person that determines the direction of your life. And at first it might seem daunting. You might think, oh, well, that's difficult. How, how can you expect me to control my life? How can you expect uh, you know, me to do all this work um, to really 
I have to like, like this sounds like a lot of work. I gotta do a lot of things, are you serious? But like, if you look at it in the long term, it's a really, really good thing because like, you can't control other people. And so, if other people control your success, you can't really control what they do. But as you start to realize that it's all you and you can change everything in your life and it's your responsibility to succeed. Um, and you can go through this process of winning friends and influencing people and learning these social skills that will fundamentally change all aspects of your life and allow you to connect with those individuals that can get you to that next level. Everything changes so quickly and it's so powerful. Um, and so that's really the goal here and that's that's what you get and you develop and you learn and you learn. Um, and, and the core concept and the fundamental baseline and like the foundation for everything that you're learning here is that it's your responsibility. Um, your life is, is your responsibility and the growth and the, the development and the success is your responsibility. So as you go through this course, as you go through this training, like there's nobody else that can make you, like I can't force you to go through this. Um, or, or I just, it's just not, it's not possible, right? It's gotta be you, it's, it's all you. Um, and I'll finish it off with this one story and then we'll, we'll be done. I was at this cross country camp and we're sitting on this like big turf field inside because it was raining and we were taking like a 10 minute break or something. Cause you don't stop for rain. Like people, you, you run in the rain um, and it's awesome. You get wet, it's, it's so much fun. You have like this huge mess and oh my God, it's just awesome. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're out there and, and we're running the rain. We take a little bit of a break. We come inside and this guy gives us like a little speech about like the camp and it was like the first day and everyone was super excited. And he, he says, you know, why are you guys here? And for some people, you know, they were there for like social reasons or they were there to fit in or they were there to have some fun or they were there just like, cause you know, cross country is super cool, right? Um, and they just love running. And so that was like a lot of people's reasons. And what the guy said was so, so, so profound. He said, raise your hand if you think, you know, some, if somebody forced you to be. Um, and a couple people raised their hand. Uh, you know, like the parents made them go or something. And then he said, keep your hand up if you think, or, or raise your hand if you think that like you can force somebody to do something. And like probably like half the room, three quarters of the room had their hand up. And it's just so insane, it's so bogus because like in the short term, sure, you know, if I'm like, here's a hundred bucks, go, you know, flip yourself over in a port john or something. Like people are stupid and people will do that. Um, it's just terrible, it's disgusting. Uh, in the short term, you know, you can influence people with like bogus, right? But in the long term, there is, there's no way to change the path or the direction of somebody's life externally. You can't like force somebody to do something for the rest of their life. Like if you're paying someone, you know, a really nice salary and, and it's their, you're giving them this job that they absolutely freaking hate, but you're rewarding them, you know, externally, like it's just not gonna last. And in the short term, sure, maybe for a couple of years. But in the long term, like for that person to really maximize their full potential and to realize their peak ability, they've got to pursue their own path and they have to follow their internal drive. And so hopefully like this course, it aligns with you and it aligns with your internal being and, and who you want to be and it'll show you that path to get to the future and the growth and the impact that you desire. Because the instant that you do that, the instant that you internalize the development that you desire, like everything changes. And so that's really the goal here with all of this is it's all you. Um, so with that said, uh, thank you guys so much for going through this module. Take it, apply it, absolutely crush it. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Want more stock market secrets? If so, go get your free copy of my best-selling book, 9 to Noon. You can get your free copy plus $11,176 of unannounced bonuses that took me years to uncover completely for free at 9toNoonSecrets.com. Inside 9 to Noon, you'll find the top 38 secrets you can use to double your portfolio every two years and make upwards of 10% per trade daily.